Good morning, family, and welcome to live streaming for the Ahaya Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful downtown Pasadena, California, USA. I am Reverend Michael Bernard, your assistant minister and your guide on the side today. So honored to be here to say Happy Father's Day, Happy Juneteenth. It's a wonderful time to be alive on the planet and to be a part of this wonderful birth process that we're all experiencing together. And good to be reminded that we're all in it together. So welcome to God's party. And we've, of course, got our beloved licensed practitioner and musical director, Chris Glick, accompanying our new musical inspiration today. It's Grace Fay. Her first time being with us. Thank you, Grace. Let's give her plenty of that uh, higher love and light. Also, in the chat room, we have our beloved Louise Mucha as the Facebook Live moderator. Be sure to uh, chat in between the meditations and uh, make sure you share some of that love and light with your fellow uh, Ahaya family. Also, Derek on video, uh, Mindy Morrison moderating the Zoom room, and Peter Bedard moderating the YouTube live streaming. Our beloved Practitioner Emeritus Marsha Bradshaw will be leading us in the inspirational reading on Juneteenth today. And so, please join with me as we just draw in a deep centering breath as we prepare for the meditation. Hmm. So glad morning when this life is over. Fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away.
Good morning, Ahaya. Happy Father's Day. I'm just going to let you see this tie that one of my sons gave me. It has Beethoven all over it. And this is my celebration of Father's Day as a father. All you fathers out there, we're all one just like everything else that we believe. God is here right now. This is the month called Pride Month. We celebrate that as the unity and wholeness of who we all are. <clears throat> it's also the celebration of the emancipation of slaves way back. It's also the date that my wife and I uh, became a husband and wife. So breathe in this energy because it's all love. It's all wholeness. It's all beauty. It's spirit. Because in spirit, we receive all the blessings as we breathe in. And we breathe this out and we spread this all out into the whole universe. That's what we do. We're powerful. And as we know this, as you know this with me, take that breath, breathe that love in, breathe it out and circulate this into the world that is your universe and mine. It's all one. And we just know that this connection is the connection that I have with spirit, that you have, that the community, the whole United States has, and I just bless the whole world, the whole universe, as this breath is going in and out. And I just thank Reverend Scott, I thank Derek, I thank Gloria on the sound, I thank our blessed singer soloist today, Grace Faye. I just know that all of these are making the service as complete as God, as spirit. And I just give thanks for all that there is in this community, and I just give thanks and release this word to the law because I know it already is. And just say with me, please, and so it is, amen and amen. And now I would like to read from the Science of Mind magazine. This is from Sunday, June 21st, Spirituality as Compassion. Marcus Aurelius says, what is not good for the swarm is not good for the bee. Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind, page 41, says, it is a beautiful and true thought to realize that every man stands in the shadow of a mighty mind a pure intelligence, and a divine givingness. What makes us mavericks enough to risk our lives to do our best for others? Who informed us that we were that good shepherd that would lay down her life for her sheep? Would you be able to act as Harriet Tubman did, who having escaped from slavery to freedom, worked hard to save enough money only to return to the field of danger to free others. She knew such kindness would be worthy of execution, yet Tubman, the conductor of the Underground Railroad, guided more than 300 slaves to freedom over a period of 10 years. She was even nicknamed Moses. During the Civil War, Tubman served as a nurse, cook, laundress, spy, and scout. After the Emancipation Proclamation, she returned to Auburn, New York, where she lived the rest of her life. She lived an open-hearted life for those in need. The Maverick Moses archetype was alive and well in Tubman. Although we cannot all be the same when it comes to helping others, 
Whether from a lack of courage or because we value our possessions, Tubman's selfless acts of love give us pause to see what a total commitment love is. Perhaps we may be inspired to overcome fear and lead our best ideas out of the slavery of being unexpressed. The affirmation today is, may Hub Harriet Tubman's great example inspire us to a greater expression of compassion. Thank you. God bless you. Hi, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here at Ahaya. My name is Grace Fay, and this is my first time, and I feel so honored to be in this absolutely beautiful space. Um, we're all alone in here, but we're thinking of all of you out there at home, and um, I know that we can get through this together. Uh, I've decided to devote these two songs that I'm going to sing today to Judy Garland and to the Pride community. Happy Pride, everybody. Um, I think you'll love this next tune. When all the world is a hopeless jumble And the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic lane When all the clouds darken up the skyway there's a rainbow highway to be found Leading from your windowpane To a place behind the sun Just a step beyond the Bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow. Why? 
Grace Faye. That was a perfect song choice. I love Somewhere Over the Rainbow. It's always been one of my favorites. And uh, Judy Garland was a gay legend. Uh, She wasn't gay, but to gay men, she was a legend in her day. And we have loved her long after she died. Uh, Judy's death was on June 27th, 1969. And the very next day, the Stonewall Riots, which are known as the beginning of the LGBT movement in America, that those riots were sparked off for many, many reasons. Police oppression uh, being the number one, but I think maybe Judy's death had a big part to play in the timing of those riots. So um, my name is Reverend Scott Olson. I'm the senior minister here at Ohio Center for Spiritual Living. And I'm truly, truly blessed to be here with you in this virtual space that we've been able to create in order for our community to uh, be able to get together and to see each other and to enjoy this service and everything. I hope that our longtime members of Ohio, that you're chatting away in the chat box because that's a way for you to get to uh, communicate with each other and, and see how everybody is doing. For the people who have recently found us, you know, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I would love for you to chat in the chat box also because that allows us to to get to know you a little bit more and have you come into our community, which we would love. And then I'd love for you to get to know us a little bit better by going to our website, which is at ahia.com. And if you would go and subscribe to our newsletter, which is at ahaya.com slash subscribe, then you would be able to get our newsletter and you'll find out even more stuff about us and how you can, you know, all the activities that we're doing that you could participate in. That would be wonderful. So the theme for June is mindfulness for Mavericks. And so we've been talking about Mavericks and I have two more attributes of Mavericks to talk about. One is that they challenge the status quo. Um, And what happens when somebody challenges my status quo is that I get this thing called cognitive dissonance kind of going off in my mind. And it's, it's, you know, when that happens, I'm not really able to um, concentrate on what's going on around me. And I think that's kind of what's happening in, in America right now with the Black Lives Movement Uh, Black Lives Matters movement is that, you know, the world, especially America, has got a little bit of cognitive dissonance going on. But that's okay, because that's the first step in straightening out and getting back into alignment with what is true. Another attribute of Mavericks is they have strong convictions. And, you know, these convictions, they come from our values, And values decide, you know, what we're going to prioritize as high versus low. And they also decide what are we willing to take a stand for. It's our values that decide what we're going to stand up for. And so, you know, I think right now it's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to act. And the first way for us to act is to speak out. So this week... We're talking about mindful speech. And, you know, it's a follow-up to last week's talk, which was about mindful intentions, which was a follow-up to just breathe, which told you what your intentions were supposed to be. And the power of the spoken word has always been recognized throughout the ages. And in fact, in Christianity, it's written in John, the very beginning, the very, very beginning of the book of John, He says, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. 
And there's a lots of ways of interpreting that. What I believe that means is that our word is extremely powerful, that it is it is God because it is creative in, as, and through God. So what I want to do is I want to ask Marsha Bradshaw and Reverend Michael Bernard Lattimore to come on up. Uh, Marsha's going to tell us a little bit about Juneteenth, and Reverend Mike, he's going to tell us um, his power talk for today. Good morning. My name is Marcia Bradshaw, and I'm a practitioner emeritus at Ohio Center for Spiritual Living. This morning, I've come to talk to you about the holiday Juneteenth. So last year, Ohio held its first Juneteenth celebration, which was an excellent outdoor event, both outdoors and indoors. We barbecued and had a great deal of fun. We were honoring the diversity of the congregation. Today, as we are in the midst of the pandemic and protests, Ahia continues to honor the diversity of its congregation by establishing a Juneteenth webpage, which you can find and will be listed, recognizing the holiday. I have come to share some historical facts about Juneteenth and to recite Maya Angelou's poem, Still I Rise. Juneteenth, also known as Juneteenth Independence Day or Freedom Day, is a holiday that commemorates the June 19, 1865 announcement of the abolition of slavery in the United States, the state of Texas, and more generally, the emancipation of enslaved African Americans throughout the former Confederate States of America. It, Juneteenth is recognized as a state holiday. On June 18, the Union Army General Gordon Grain arrived at Galveston Island with 2,000 federal troops to occupy Texas on behalf of the federal government. The following day, standing on the balcony of Galveston's Ashton Villa, Granger read aloud the contents of General Order No. 3. The following year, freed men organized the first of what became the annual Juneteenth celebration in Texas. In some cities, African Americans were barred from using public parks for this celebration because of state-sponsored segregation of facilities. Across parts of Texas, freed people pooled their funds to purchase land to hold these celebrations. Today, it is Juneteenth is observed primarily in local celebrations. Traditions include public readings of the Emancipation Proclamation and singing traditional songs such as the African American na National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing and reading of words by noted African-American writers. So I will read Maya Angelou's poem, Still I Rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? 
Does my hauntiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide leaving behind nights of terror and fear. I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear. I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise. Thank you. Have a great day. Happy Father's Day, family, and happy Juneteenth. You know, there are no coincidences, and I sense very strongly that the convergence of these two uh, holidays uh, have a special significance to us. I know for myself, they certainly do. Uh, Father's Day uh, reminds me that uh, 39 years ago, uh, my father made his transition crossing over into the light. And being from different generations, uh, my dad and I had a lot of conversations about the uh, topic of change, of shift, social change, and, and, and even revolution. Um, at the time of our most uh, vocal conversations, I was a conscientious objector uh, in opposition to the Vietnam War and firmly convinced that uh, our society really needed a complete revamping and in, in a most uh, revolutionary kind of way. Uh, my dad had a more tempered uh, viewpoint on it, much like I have today myself, and he believed that uh, revolution was a human event, that it required us to change inside of ourselves so that we would reflect then a society of changed people. I am uh, so pleased to Day to be able to say, Pop, uh, you were absolutely right. I understand that revolution is a human event and that the changes that we're experiencing right now collectively are adding up to a human revolution in which we get to create a world of truly human beings. And, and out of this uh, convergence, we have the uh, celebration of Juneteenth, which when upon close examination is a miracle in itself. You see, when the proclamation, the Emancipation Proclamation was first issued, um, the enslaved people were only set free in states that were not Union occupied. So in the states that were occupied by the Union, the slaves were not free. A couple of um, months, actually about a year before the Emancipation Proclamation, the Union Army had moved through Virginia and over 5,000 enslaved men uh, set free. They joined the Union Army to get their freedom. Uh, one of those men was a man named Rush Green. He was born in 1846, and so at this time he was about 17. He had just turned 17. He joined uh, the Union Army, and he um, consequently changed his name, changed his identity. He became a freedman. He chose a name for himself, telling his son, who was my uh, great grandfather, uh, that a man has got the right to name himself. And so uh, freedom for him ultimately meant that he could determine uh, his own destiny. 
After joining the Union Army, he then moved to uh, Kentucky. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, Kentucky uh, celebrates August the 8th as Emancipation Day because uh, they were not freed uh, during the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, but uh, somewhere around August the 8th of the following year, uh, they got news that uh, they also uh, were free. Now, the interesting thing about uh, Juneteenth is that initially it was very, very difficult for um, uh, African Americans to celebrate because uh, they were banned, there were segregation laws. So it w really was not uh, very easy for them to celebrate. However, uh, what happened is that upon General Granger reading this proclamation, what happened was called the scatter. Well, African Americans by the thousands left enslavement, making their way north. There were Quakers and other abolitionists who assisted them, but many of them were actually murdered along the way for the audacity of thinking that they could escape slavery. So in reality, it was close to a hundred years before this Juneteenth celebration became widely accepted. And, and what was the, uh, the integrating point, the, the actual inspirational point, was the civil rights movement. Because during this era, uh, there were civil rights activists who then took the Juneteenth celebration across the nation into small towns, into hamlets, and said, you know, this is a part of our history. We need to fully celebrate this. And, um, you know, believe it or not, uh, some 60 years later, after the civil rights movement, uh, the Juneteenth is still not a federal holiday. So it seems to me like there's still some work uh, for us to do, uh, considering that this is is a government of the people, for the people, and, and by the people. So it's, it's absolutely up to us. So the other piece that keeps coming forward for me, and curiously enough, I have tried to record this three separate times and my camera keeps cutting off. So I'm going to kind of flip the script a little bit and change the perspective because this that I'm talking about is deeply personal. It's about me. When I'm so this is about the convergence of these two topics. My, my dad on one hand, whose conversations contributed to my transformation uh, from a um, pretty volatile young man into a human uh, evolutionary. And then on the other hand, the person who you see on the screen, Dr. Reverend Dr. Maisha Hazard, one of my uh, professors, who profoundly inspired me in the conversations that, that we had. And so specifically, what's coming forward for me is that this is a time of convergence. It's a time in which we are being called forward to transmute energy in the space, in the world, in our own lives, to transmute the meaning of events that have happened to us into seeing the good in it. So one of the experiences that uh, we talked about was the fact that there is no death, that all of our ancestors uh, who it appears may have perished during the Atlantic slave trade, they may have perished during the 400 years of enslavement and so forth, uh, their energy, their prayers are very much alive and that their prayers are us. We are the answered prayer. You see, what has happened is that we have emerged from out of all of that darkness, all of that suffering, all of the racism, and all the appearance of darkness, we have emerged as a force for love. We stand in that love. And our task is like the wounded healer, like the shaman, our task is to transmute poison into medicine. The, the hurt, the anger, the outrage, the resentment, all of the appearance of darkness, the fear, all of that. We take it all and we transmute it into the essence from which it sprang. For all that has transpired has created the foundational wealth of the planet. It has created us the answered prayer, 
And it's created this time in history that has never come before. Everybody on the planet is feeling it. And we're feeling it. And so in the, in the respect of the essence, the consideration of mindful speech, let us be mindful of how we talk to ourselves. Let us be mindful of the compassion that we call forward so that all living beings, us included, can experience that peace, can experience the love that has created all of this for the highest good for everyone concerned. And what a wonderful time to be alive and how fortunate we are to have one another, this spiritual community, and to know the truth that God is, and because God is, I am. Mm. Namaste, family. Oh, thank you, Marcia. That was a wonderful discussion about Juneteenth, and I loved your reading of Still I Rise. That's one of my favorite poems ever. And Reverend Mike, um, remembering that our inheritance, the world that we have right now is our inheritance, and that it's the result of the prayers of our ancestors, I think that's wonderful. So this week's talk title is Mindful Speech, and I think we have plenty to talk about. I think the world has plenty uh, to talk about right now. There's a lot going on at the moment. Now, Reverend Mike, he talked about how he's got a couple of things really kind of mashing together right now, Juneteenth and Father's Day are, are kind of coming together in his mind. For me, it, it seems like there's a whole jumble going on in my mind right now. There's a lot of things all happening at the same time right now. First of all, there's 2020, this year that, that fits this phrase of 2020 vision, meaning clear vision. And so we've been putting into the universe in our own way the fact that we are going to have a very clear vision in 2020. And boy, hasn't that happened. There is just no way of saying that, that this year is not about clear vision and seeing the world good, bad, and ugly in the way that it really is showing up. The other is the pandemic. The pandemic is, you know, creating in our lives right now in a way that's showing us that we have to change. The world has to change, not any particular nation, but the world and humanity as a whole has to change in order for us to move forward in the world with joy, with confidence, and with ease. And then Friday was uh, Juneteenth, and that energy of Juneteenth is so fitting of the energy of uh, the Black Lives Matters movement and their protest. It's amazing. We're also in June, which means that it's Pride Month. And so gay rights have been at the forefront also. And amazingly, the Supreme Court held down, you know, handed down a decision that supported gay rights last week. On top of all of that, we have today being Father's Day. And for me, the energy of Father's Day is all about creating something new, about change. Not change for any, you know, for, for myself, for, because of me, but change for my children's sake. That's what, what rings true for me around Father's Day. And so this week, the fathers who are immigrants who brought their children undocumented into this country, um, they got a wonderful decision from the Supreme Court also around the DACA. And so what the events that are happening right now in the world are all just kind of coming forward in a really interesting way. And then on top of the, all of that, we put in the energy that is um, the summer solstice. Now, there are many, many uh, cultures who celebrate the summer solstice in a lot of different ways. I'm just going to talk about the Christian um, culture right now. In the Christianity, uh, they put the nativity of John the Baptist as being six months behind 
uh, the the birth of Christ according to their calendar, which is Christmas. And so now the summer solstice represents to them the nativity of John the Baptist. And the thing about John the Baptist is that he prepared the way for the real change, which was Jesus Christ. And so this energy of summer solstice, what you could say is that it's the beginning of summer, it's the um, it's the, the, the allowing of seeds that were already planted in spring to come forward, to burst forth, and to be supported by the summer suns. That's, uh, you know, so the energy of all of this mashed together is quite amazing to me. And it's been really just kind of moving around in my mind. What it means to me is that we are in a time of change and that we need to speak up. Now, there are many, many reasons why we don't speak up. Primarily, it's fear. It's fear, I think, of being misunderstood, or it's the fear of the reaction that would happen that would uh, be the result of the words that we used. And so many times, it's easier to just say nothing, be quiet, sit in the corner. But um, that's not the right thing for us to do. I'm going to give you two quotes from a woman named Audrey um, Lord, And she is a self-described black, lesbian, mother, warrior poet. That's what she thought of herself, which I think is fantastic. She was also a poet laureate for New York State for a number of years. And here's the first quote. It says, I have come to believe over and over again that what is most important to me must be spoken, made verbal and shared, even at the risk of having it bruised or misunderstood. So even if we're fearful of of, it coming back at us or not being understood what we're saying, she's saying it's still important for us to speak. The other quote she has is, when we speak, we are afraid. Our words will not be heard or welcomed. But when we are silent, we are still afraid. So it is better to speak. And so I think it's time for us to regain our voice, but to do it very mindfully. Let us go out and speak with words of hope. Our words should always uplift people. They should never degrade anyone. Our words should never create a, a, an atmosphere of violence. We should always be creating atmospheres or ways of being that are filled with love and with hope. I want to tell you a little bit about a man named Harvey Milk. He was a gay member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, back in 1978. And um, back back then, he authored and got passed an anti-discrimination law based on sexuality that was the first in its nation. Soon after that, um, he and Mayor Moscone were shot by a man named Dan White. Uh, you might remember that he's the one that that got off from murder one with, uh, I think he got voluntary manslaughter because of his Twinkie defense. And, uh, you know, he said he had a lot of Twinkies. He ate Twinkies and the sugar kept him from knowing what to do. Well, anyway, uh, I'm not really here to talk about Dan White. What I'm here to talk about is what uh, Harvey Milk stood for. And one of the things he said was, hope is never silent. And I think that goes so well with the energy of Friday's Juneteenth. You know, that is an energy of hope is never silent. We have been for 150 years now, we've been going forward from that day, moving one small step at a time, because hope is never silent. So I want to tell you a story, and in order to tell you the story, I have to take us back five years ago, because on Wednesday, 
uh, it was the five-year anniversary of the shooting at Mother Emanuel Church, AME Church in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And that is such a sad thing to remember. But it's the backdrop for an interview that um, NPR did with a man named Chris Singleton. And Chris, he was 18 years old and in college that day when his phone rang, and it was a call from his mother's phone. When he answered the phone, it wasn't his mother that, that was on the other end of the phone, though. It was a woman he knew from church telling him to come to church right away. Something terrible had happened. And so he he went to the church right away to find out that his mother was one of the nine people who were fatally shot that day. And, um, and of course, Charleston, um, Charleston kind of erupted after that whole event. And there were protests and there, were, there was a lot of stuff happening. And he decided, Chris decided to go to one of the protests right after that and uh, all of a sudden, a microphone was there, and he said this. He said, I just say love is always stronger than hate. So if we just love the way my mom would, then the hate won't be anywhere close to where love is. The hate won't be anywhere close to where love is. That's the energy that I think we need to put into our mindful speech. I hope that if I'm ever in that situation, that I can say words like that. Chris went on to be a motivational speaker. His intent is to spread love out in the world. I think he was well chosen by spirit to speak that day. You know, I believe that Father's Day here today, it's for our children that we speak. As a father today, it's why I'm speaking out. Because I think it's up to me to play my part in creating a better world. Emerson says this. He says, speech is power. Speech is to persuade, to convert, to compel. It is to bring another out of his bad sense into your good sense. Now, you know, I am not about coercion in any way, whether it's through speech or through actions. But I think that speech is powerful. And if we go out and we tell the world our experiences, then we're not coercing anybody. We're just showing people what the truth of the world is to us. So I'd like to end with an affirmation. It's here on the screen, and if you would read that with me. We speak life into being with an intention of love, oneness, and peace for ourselves and all living things. Let's say that again. We speak life into being with an intention of love, oneness, and peace for ourselves and all living things. So as you go out into your week this week, what I want you to remember is that you are a spiritual maverick. And since you are a maverick, what convictions do you have? What are the values that you have that will stand you up to speak about what? And then when you do speak, what I want you to do is fill your words with hope and with love. And remember that on this Father's Day, amid all that has happened in this world, that we should raise our voices up in hope and love. We do this. We do it for our children. We do it for our grandchildren. We do it for all those generations that are still coming. This world is our inheritance. We received it the way we received it. I want to honor Reverend Mike for reminding us that is, we are the recipient of our ancestors' prayers. That's absolutely true. 
And what that means is that it's time for us to be looking to see what are we handing our world off? What kind of world are we handing to the next generation and all the generations to come? What are the prayers that we are saying right now? Are they love and are they hope? Are they something else? Remember that you're powerful, my, my word is powerful, your word is powerful, and that we need to stand in our power by standing in love. So we let our experiences help other people to see the world a little bit as we see it, but most of all, we go out and we allow spirit to guide us. Thank you, and namaste. And so now I just ask you to join me in a little bit of prayer. And so if we go within in this moment and we recognize the one power, the one presence, the one life that is within, it is never found without. It is always that still small voice within us that is calling us and telling us the truth of who we are. I know that life, that power, that presence is all that there is, and I know it to be the love and the peace and the joy that everything is created from. And as that's true of spirit, I know it to be the truth of me. I know it to be the truth of you. I know it to be the truth of everyone and everything, that there is only one life, one power, one presence, and it is living itself in, as, and through us always. I am so grateful for knowing that truth. I am so grateful for knowing that this life is moving through us with joy, with peace, with love, with wholeness, with order, with prosperity. All these qualities that we ascribe to God, it is the truth of each and every one of us. And so it's from that place of knowingness that I speak my word as the truth right here, right now. On this Father's Day, right here, I am knowing that newness is being created, and that it is being created for the future. It is not being created right now for us, not in this energy of Father's Day, but it is being created for what is coming after us, for who is coming after us, for all the life that is showing up after us. I know that we are being good stewards in this moment as we put out into the universe all the love and the peace and the joy that this world needs. I am knowing absolutely that there is a divine love that is moving through us and as us, and it is operating at the very core of our being. It is expressing and being reflected back to us as the love that God is, as divine grace, as the acceptance of each and every one of us in the way that we show up. And so for knowing all of that, I just give thanks, and I release this prayer to the law, knowing that it's already fulfilled in the mind that God is, and I say life and God are good and very good, and together we say, and so it is, amen and amen. And so now's the time for a conscious contribution, so if you will take out whatever you have uh, already given maybe, or what you intend, it's virtually being taken out because um, for the most part, we're not just receiving it here with our ushers right now as we normally would. Know that uh, however you want to support us, that you can give that support to us through our website at ahaya.com slash donate, or you can text to give us um, at 616 229 22 or you can send it to our address at 150, I'm sorry, 150 North El Molino Avenue, Pasadena, California, 91101. However you do that, know that we are grateful, that we gratefully accept every gift that comes to us, whether it's your time or your talent or your treasure. Thank you so much for supporting us in our Um, in our mission to bring this teaching out into the world and to support each and every person on their path through our um, services on Sunday, also through our classes and other things that we do throughout the week. 
And so if you'll take whatever you have and bring it to your heart and read along with me, this gift I give is God in action. I send it forth with joy and confidence and ease. I am blessed by the law of giving and receiving as I now share my good with life. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And so it is. Amen and amen. Wow, thank you all so much. Uh, my name is Grace Faye, and I'm here to sing one more tune made famous by Judy Garland. This is Get Happy. And no matter what you're going through, I think we should. Everybody gather round. Alleluia, alleluia. Everybody we have found. A land where the weary forever are free. Everybody come. your troubles and just get happy. I'm going to chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for this blessed day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. Spirit is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're in the promised land. Come on, get happy, get ready for the judgment day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. Spirit is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're in the promised land. We're heading across the river. Wash yourself clean in the tide. It's all so peaceful. On the other side, forget your troubles and just get happy. I'm on to chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for this blessed day. Get ready for this blessed day. <laughs> and so now... Let's do a couple of announcements. Uh, we only have two announcements today. The first is that on Friday night, the Women's Circle, it's back to its regular time. And uh, we would love for you to join Basha and Yumiko. Um, they are known as the Rainbow Whispers. And they're, um, they are doing a breathtaking and sacred sound 111. And they're asking you to take a journey with them through the breathtaking landscape of high-frequency instruments. And then on Saturday morning roundtable, it is Creativity is Good for the Soul with Susan Rios. And she's going to be showing you, um, she is a renowned artist, by the way. You would love um, <laughs> what you get to see from her. And so she is going to be uh, showing you how to use creativity for your own enjoyment and mental health. And that's Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Both of these are in our Zoom room, and you can get to that uh, Zoom room by going to ahaya.com slash virtual. And so now is our uh, benediction. And so if you'll read along with me, it's here on your screen. Something wonderful is happening through me right now. It is this thing called life. 
Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in all of my affairs. I accept it. I am it. And I share it. Just the way it appears. And just the way it appears not. Thank you, life. Amen and amen. And so we would love to have you join us in our Zoom room for a little bit of fellowship. You can uh, find that, that connection to us in our Zoom room on our website at ahaya.com slash virtual. I'll be there in a few minutes. Hope to see you then.